Hello, everybody. Today's guest, well, he joins a list of Michael Sheen, Matthew Rees, Rees Ifans, Ruth Jones, in my list of Welsh greats that I've interviewed because it is a man who I think the others would admit is, is, is a little more heroic. I mean, don't get me wrong, Sheen is heroic in his own way, but I think today's guest has a, a heroism about him. When you meet him in the flesh, you'd think, oh, he's quite heroic. And, and when you look at the roles he's been offered, Rob, who are you talking about? Are you finally talking to Shakin Stevens? No. Ladies and gentlemen, a hero's welcome for Luke Evans. Hello, Mr. Bryden. Mr. Evans, is it hot where you are? It is warm, yeah, because it's, it's Ibiza. Oh, you're in Ibiza? Oh, you Yeah, I have a house animal. here. You oh, have no. a house here? Oh, my word. Luke, you've changed. You've oh, changed. changed. How can a boy from Abba, Abba Bargoid have a house <laughs> in Ibiza? <laughs> How often do you get out there now then to this to this? Well, house? it depends. It all depends on work, really. I mean, this year, I would say, since I came back from Colombia shooting this show I did there for 10 months, I've come back probably more this year than I have any, than any other year so far. I, you were shooting a show in Colombia for 10 months? Yeah. Yeah, it was a long time. And what was the show you were doing over there? It was called Echo 3, and it was a... a geopolitical military thriller. Um, I played a Delta Force special operative soldier whose sister gets kidnapped by militia in the jungle and it takes us 10 episodes to find her. <laughs> <laughs> now, in my introduction to you, I described you as heroic and you just <laughs> said a line there which I will never say in my career. I was playing a Delta special forces operative. You know, I'm never going to do that, am I? So you've played, know, you, you've maybe. often, no, 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 Luke, we, we both know the truth. So <laughs> you, you've played so many heroic, I mean, Gaston is, is the one that, uh, and was that the last time I saw you? I remember bumping into you at, That's was it right. Pinewood or Shepparton or somewhere like that? It was Shepparton, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you were in yeah, yeah. Uh, Snow White and the Huntsman. I was in the less successful sequel, uh, the, the Huntsman Winter's War. Oh, I think right. Snow White and the Huntsman did perfectly well, but the one I was in <laughs> sank without a trace. And you were there. Um, no one sings like Gaston. No one hmm, like Gaston. Yeah. That must have been a lovely, a lovely job to do. Well, it was. I mean, um, you, you, you know, I'm from theatre and, and musical theatre yeah. from the beginning. And since starting to do movies 15 years ago, I sort of the singing sort of took a back burner and nobody really knew 10 years after that, that I even was able to sing. It wasn't something that was common knowledge. So when I got to do that, it really was merging the two loves of my my creative side, you know, acting and singing and, and doing it on such a wonderful platform as the remake of Beauty and the Beast live action version. It, it was just a joy. Every single detail that they put into that was, it was just, it had been so well thought out. It, it honoured the original, the animation, even mm. the the town centre, uh, the town, you know, with the, with the fountain in the middle. It was built to replicate the animation, which is, you know, yeah. only Disney would yeah. do something that was specific. But yeah, it was it was it was a lovely job. Now then, um, you said that when you did when you did Gaston, uh, people didn't know about your your background with, with singing. Uh, primarily, the reason you're here with me today is to talk about the new record, which we will come on to. But the beginning is musical theatre for you in London. You were a West End Wendy, were you not? I was um, treading the boards um, for, what was it, for eight years altogether? Yeah, yeah. I read a, it was 2000 to 2008. There we go. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Um, and, st yeah, did a, did a whole batch of musicals, played some of the, the, the roles I was always desperate to play as a, as a kid. There was a play at the Don Mar Warehouse. It was very difficult to be seen by the Don Mar when you're a musical theatre West End Wendy, uh, yeah, unless you're yeah. really a big star. And I wasn't a big star in theatre. I was just an, a, you know, a, a jobbing actor and, and loving my experience. So 
I went and uh, wrote a letter to the casting director and dropped it at the box office to say I was a Welsh actor. It was re- it was a Welsh play by by Peter Gill. She read it, brought me in. I met Peter Gill, and about three weeks later, they gave me the role of this one of the boys, the two boys and their mothers. From that moment, you know, I was out. Of, it wasn't in my hands anymore. Everything seemed to roll much faster than I was able to keep up with, and. I just had to keep my eyes open and enjoy every minute of it. But it, it, it sort of took a life of its own at that point. Um, my career, for, for example, was just every day there was something new, revelationary that I was hearing through this signing with an agent in America and a manager and going for an audition for a screen test in, in Los Angeles, flying business class, turning left. You'd never done that before. <laughs> There was no left on the planes that I took, let me tell you. <laughs> and I just took every day as it came, you know, and um, and shared it with my family. As like, you never guess what's happening today. Yeah. Yeah. You never yeah. guess who I met today, you know. You never guess I just got a job. I'm going to be working with Liam Neeson. <laughs> it's just, it was, uh, you know, I still have those moments now, just to be uh, bl- perfectly clear. I It hasn't changed the the thrill and excitement. I talked to Matthew Reese about working with Hanks, uh, Thomas Hanks, of course, on um, that thing he did, A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood. Have you not just mm. worked with him? I have, yeah, yeah. It comes what, out. What was that on? This was Pinocchio. Tell me about your first day on set with him. Well, actually, it was lovely. I was in a makeup truck with lots of other chairs, but only me. And then one day, me and Tom were in the same makeup truck. He was having his wig taken off. I was having my wig put on. I just sat there, turned over, looked at him, and he just looked at me, and he was like, Luke! I was like, Mr. Hanks, how are you? It is one of those moments, isn't it, when you meet someone who, I mean, his films, his stories, his performances have have, have been, they've been throughout my whole cinema viewing experiences as, as a child, mm-hmm. through my teenage years, into my 20s, 30s, 40s. He's been there throughout, you know. Um, well, he's, the, well, he's one of the closest things we have to the old school movie stars, isn't he, in terms yeah. of the kind of the, the breadth of his work. And th- there's a great integrity to him, mm. it seems to me. And he's a nice guy. This is your album, A Song For You. It's your second album. Yeah, we flew to Prague and uh, we were up at the crack of dawn, went to the, the, the studios where the orchestra was already tuning up and uh, we went for it. And some of, the, some of the tracks as well, like the first song, which is obviously where I got the title for the album, yeah. A Song For You by Donny Hathaway, we did at 9 a.m. on the second morning um, in one take, which was with you the sang, orchestra. I now, that, that's an especially impressive performance. You did that at 9 o'clock in the morning? I did. Wow. Yeah. When does it come out? It comes out on November 4th. Okay, so the day before Bonfire Day, what better way to celebrate, okay? Go, yeah. get, get hold get hold of Luke's record. Uh, record, listen to me. Get hold of no, Luke's... It is a record. <laughs> it, is, it is a record. He's got a tape cassette coming out. <laughs> so what we share is a country, Wales, and mm-hmm. that's where we both grew up. Abba Bargoid, is that where you're from? That is exactly where I'm from, yes. Mouth of the River Bargoid. <laughs> the Mouth of the River Bargoid. Tell me about your childhood there. That's It's in the Welsh Valleys for people who are unfamiliar. It's in the Welsh Valleys and I was brought up in a little village. It was primarily a mining village, so I lived in a miner's house. I was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness. I was an only child. My dad's a bricklayer. My mother was a housewife and cleaner. And... Um, We'd go to church twice a week. Didn't enjoy school. I was bullied very, very badly. <clears throat> Partly because I was Jehovah's Witness. Uh, I mean, uh, we had just an arrow pointed to the top of my head, you know, like, bully this one. He, he won't fight back. They were right. <laughs> I, I didn't. Uh, and I also didn't have any brothers and sisters. I didn't have any sort of defense mechanisms. I didn't need them because I was. I came from a very warm, loving family. But, you know... Kids can be horrible, you know, and I think I was just a target. And how long did that continue for? How long did the did the bullying go on for? Till I left school. Oh, God. From the age of maybe like six or seven through to I left 16. No, yeah, yeah. that's awful. Horrendous. Oh, yeah, it was horrible, horrible. And how, what, is that, what would... mark has that made on you now then? How has that informed your character mm. now? Well, I made a decision very early on 
to be very pragmatic about it. I was like, this is only a window in my life. I just got to get through it. I also knew that I was gay and that I had to deal with that. And, and <laughs> I was like, all right, like, what's the plan? And so I knew that the plan was I can legally leave school at 16. I've just got to get to 16, do my GCSEs and then get out and get a job and start your life. And that's basically what I did. I did my final GCSE, ran out of those gates, and I went and got a job in River Island footwear department and uh, start, paid for my own first first paid for my first singing lesson at sixteen. One day they'll make a film about your life, won't they? This is crying <laughs> out for the big screen. I have thought about writing it because I do think it is it's slightly Billy Elliot esque in a way, you know. In a, you know, he's from a working yeah. class, but there is a different side to this story and. The, you know, and also just the fact that it did affect me. Of course it did. But I knew that it wasn't forever. Yeah. Which a lot of kids, when they're bullied, they can't see the wood for the trees. They're just in a haze of darkness. And it's very hard to to think this cloud's going to move at some point. And um, <clears throat> I've used my voice as an adult to talk about it, especially because, you know, you see, you see me, Owen Shaw from Fast and the Furious, Dracula, you know, Gaston, you know, Delta Force Special Operative, like, you know, he looked hard as nails, looks hard as nails, and he was bullied for his whole childhood. And But he yeah. came out of it, you know. You yeah. can, and you just got to, you just got to be able to look a little further ahead than you're able to reach and touch at the time. And it's hard as a kid to do that. And I didn't really... Oh, it's incredibly of- hard. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I'm amazed when you, that you had that foresight. But knowing that at some point my life will take another turn... But it'll be, I'll control that, you know. By 17, I was in London. I won a scholarship, you know, and that I was in London at 17. The bright lights, you know, the underground, Leicester Square, Piccadilly Circus, and a scholarship to go to musical theatre college, which, you know, for the first year, I thought I, I mean, I thought I knew I was gay. I didn't realize what gay meant until I went to this college. And you saw, <laughs> then I saw West End Wendy's. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I can do this. I mean, let's like, <laughs> high kicking queens coming down the corridor. Ah, we're all very different. We're the same, but we're all very, very different. So what's what's next for you other other than a song for you? Which I can't believe you recorded that. I listened to that and we just got back from France. I'll tell you where I was. We we're on a long car journey going from one part of France to another. And they'd sent me an advanced thing of, of the record. So I, so I put it on and it opens oh, up with that. a song for you. And I'm driving, right? And this is my reaction, right? As I'm driving, I'm going, oh, yeah, fair play. Yeah. I mean, that, oh, it was, wow. it's, it's really good. Oh, I really appreciate that, Rob, because, you know, fellow Welshman, you know, you know, you, you know your voices. I mean, I, I'm so proud of my being Welsh and anybody that's Welsh that has done well for themselves. And, you know, we're a, we're a small little country, really. We yeah. really are. Yeah, yeah. No, I know there's it's not incredible. a lot of us. I know when it's incredible. When you think what we have produced from mm-hmm. sportsmen and women yeah. and people to, to creative people, to the, to the industry of the movies, music, I mean, it just, it's spewing with talent. And new talent coming up through the through the ranks, and it's just a to joy to to say thank you yes. very much. Thank you, you for saying day, that about you know, me. It's very kind. Thank you're you. Coming up through the ranks, Rob. It's lovely to see fresh, you. fresh young talent. I think is what you're trying to say, Luke. Fresh, fresh. So you you're in Ibiza now, then just relaxing, and then what yeah. happens next for you? I'm I'm learning a script as we speak. I'm shooting a movie at the end of September into October. Um, shooting in the UK, then the album comes out, and then I'm doing another w- w- another movie, which I'd love to talk to you about, but I can't because it's not been announced, but it's going to be a f- very, it's very, very, very exciting for me to be in this role. And then Echo 3 comes out, which is the TV show I've just done in Colombia on Apple TV. And then Scrooge comes out mid-November or sometime, some, I'm not exactly sure when it is, on Netflix. I'm the voice of the animation of Scrooge, with uh, Jonathan Price, Olivia Coleman, um, Fra Free, an amazing cast of brilliant Jesse Buckley. And then I'm doing another movie at the end of November into December um, while still trying to promote and do everything else. And then 
probably uh, straight to a, th- a, a retreat clinic <laughs> where I might sleep <laughs> for three weeks. <laughs> yes, and then some colonic irrigation, and a, a transfusion of new blood, and we'll yes. see what next year brings. <laughs> Luke, it's been a real pleasure. This is the most time we've ever spent together. I'd love to see you, um, you know, n- not like this. Yes, less pixelated. Yes. Less pe- <laughs> Yes, not as many pixels. <laughs> a real pleasure. Um, it, it, yes, the album is wonderful. It. I wish you every success with it. And um, c- keep on doing what you're doing and, and waving the flag for Wales. You too. And waving it for you too as well. Not just their early work, <laughs> some of the later albums that didn't work. He's made a joke about you too. I don't believe it. This guy's meant to be funny. He's meant to be <laughs> did a joke about you too. Did you hear that? Let's end it now. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.